Hi there. This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about autism and we can fix it. This is a big story and I want you to understand what's going on. Now, in the last mm, 70, 80 years, autism has increased in frequency from back in the 30s, it was one in a hundred thousand children diagnosed. Now, it's as much as one in 16. And if you add ADHD, it might be as maybe as much as one and a quarter, one in eight. So every classroom has a child with ADHD and every school have multiple children with autism. That kind of frequency increase can't be explained by genetic influences. It's not genes that are doing this. And we've studied immunizations out the yin yang and they aren't the cause of autism but i'm going to explain to you what the cause is and we're going to explain it over the next couple of weeks and it's basically i want we're going to break it down into three or four steps but let me give you the summary now so you understand the summary and then you can follow the detail as we go through it the summary starts in mitochondria and mitochondria that get overwhelmed and get too many calories too quickly that they aren't able to handle so that the electrons get backed up sort of like a, a dam making electricity but the excess where the water goes won't go anywhere so the dam stops making electricity the mitochondria get overwhelmed with too many electrons and they oversaturate NADH and then electrons get away they escape and they attach themselves to oxygen and they become reactive oxygen species. Those are oxidants for which you take antioxidants. So the first step in autism is the acknowledged failure. And next week we'll explain exactly how that failure plays out and how you can measure it. And we can show it and the experimental evidence is absolutely there to prove it. Okay, that's step one. Step two is those escaping electrons overwhelm the autistic child's ability to capture them with peroxide and all the enzymes in between. And as a net effect is they make too much hydroxyl ion, OH negative. And that's a really nasty ion and that attacks plasmalogens on the neurons and the plasmalogen molecule gets damaged the hydroxyl ion gets soaked up by the double bond in the plasmalogens and which means you lose the plasmalogen molecule completely which means the myelin wrapping around nerve cells gets damaged and you make melondoaldehyde which can be measured and autistic kids have three to four times the levels of melanaldehyde as normal children. Okay, and that, step three, is a potent stimulator of turning on microglia. And microglia are the macrophages of your brain, but they're resident in the brain, and they're just living there waiting to clean up garbage, to clean up dead viruses and dead cells and leftover stuff their job is to clean up and they see damaged membranes and they start attacking the membrane and you get you get effectively the stripping of myelin you get myelin damage and you can see it on MRI scans it's visible it's been proven and all of this is can be proven in part by a experimental model in animals by a chemical called cuprazone, which basically recapitulates and makes virtually the precise damage that autism makes in the brain and shows up in the same chemical signature and is cured in the same fashion. Well, step four is cure. And so the fourth email that we're going to write is going to be the, what the cure is and how to put together 
we can fix autism. So watch the next three emails, and this is going to be a Nobel Prize in Medicine, and you and I want to be in on it, and I am merely a vessel and a, tr a communicator, and I am thrilled to be part of this story, but we're going to fix autism. This horrible scourge is going to become a thing of the past. The sooner the better. And no, no expensive medications, simply generally recognized as safe supplements, but it's been knowledge and putting it together in the right spot. This should be terribly exciting. This is Dr. John Whitcomb for News and Nutrition. We're going to fix autism. <laughs>